Hello YouTube and the Tribe of the Horror Realm. Playing catch up time. And that is with the Horror Man's seven day challenge. He's uh, probably going to be anywhere in the next hour or two unveiling his seventh day. And we have to catch up by doing days four, five, and six. So let's run through them real quick. Um, now, day four is skintastic scenes. That was Nudity. <laughs> naked. <laughs> Without any clothes. <laughs> um, Teresa just loves nudie movies. I I'm, mean, I'm, I'm a little... Uh, that is not true. Oh, that's right. It's the other way around. <laughs> um, you could... This, yeah, uh, there's definitely times where I, I'll watch a movie just for a nude scene. Um, say what you want, I'll admit it. You could put, take a teaspoon and fill it with water, and I'd probably drown in it because that's how shallow I am. <laughs> you know, but hey. That's horrible. I didn't know that about you. No, I'm not really shallow. I just play it off, but I'm a guy, you, you know. For what people say, I mean, you know. Boobs are like potato chips. You don't. You just can't have one. You gotta have both. <laughs> you gotta have a bunch. So anyhow, what did you select for a nude scene besides Wild Things and Kevin Bacon's Big Schlong? Nightmare on Elm Street Part Three. The Dream Warriors. There's a part in the movie where. Um. <laughs> Go on. And I don't even know the kid's name. <laughs> Isn't that bad? The kid that played was Rodney Eastman. Alright. Rodney Eastman's in a bed, and a nurse comes in, and he's very fond of the nurse. And, um, you know, she starts taking her clothes off, and, uh, he thinks he's gonna get some, and uh, he's a really shy kid. And, um, then all of a sudden, it turns into Freddy Krueger. I remember the tongue coming out of her mouth, and uh, it's like tying his, his hands and feet to the bed uh, And, of course, he needs his demise because he's a Freddy Krueger so. She becomes naked, okay, and turns into Freddy Krueger, so... From the neck up. Yeah, so... Freddy with a great rack. Yeah, Freddy with a great rack. And then, uh, you know, he realizes that it's Freddy, and uh, the tongue just goes, ties his hands and feet to the bedpost, and after that, it's all about him. All right, I got a bunch of them that I'm going to ramble off, and I don't feel bad about it because there were a lot of videos that people who ran off a bunch of them. Some of them even liked girls that were kind of young. We're not naming names. <laughs> okay. Um, first off, American Beauty. And I speak of Thor Birch. Um, absolutely loved her in Ghost World. I like her with the nerd glasses and the punk hairdo and all that and the great rack, but um, she didn't get naked in um, Ghost World, but she certainly did in American Beauty. Um, Gypsy 83. Have you heard of the movie? No? Neither did I until I found out that Sarah Rue and her ginormous bosom actually gets naked in this movie and had to get it. I'm probably sleeping on the couch tonight when she's like, you you're not sleeping with me. Why don't you go sleep with Sarah Rue? You just get the movie for that? Uh. Well, that was the impetus of it. I mean, was it a good movie? It was alright. Okay. <laughs> um, then, Prozac Nation. Love 
love Christina Ricci. Uh, well, early, ch the little chunkier, full-figured Christina Ricci, because now she's like really skinny, doesn't look the herself. But she has a scene in the beginning of the movie where she's sitting on her bed um, naked, and I, I had it on uh, download for a while, and that's all I did was watch that scene. So I got the movie. Um, another one I just didn't dig up because is uh, I've always liked Mimi Rogers, and she's done a couple movies where she um, gets uh, down to the birthday suit. Um, there's one that's I don't think on DVD with Brian Brown, um, but there was one that she did called Door in the Floor that she was in with um, Jeff Bridges and Kim I know, Basinger. And uh, so I got the movie because she gets naked in the film. And lo and behold, it's actually a really good movie. Very good drama. Um, both uh, Bridges and uh, Basinger did a fantastic job in this movie for different reasons. But um, I didn't realize it was going to be actually a good movie. You know, it's like some of my ex-girlfriends have, like, I was surprised when I found out they had a head. <laughs> Never mind when someone asked what color their eyes were. So that's it for day four. And we're going to elevate the show a little bit more, and I'm going to come out of my little shallow pool. This is day five, and that is a movie moment that made you harken back to feeling like a kid again. And what was yours, honey? Mine was the Goonies. Because... Every kid, every kid likes to go on an adventure. What an adventure these kids went on, you know. And then you have the big brother running after them to make sure they're okay. And, you know, it all gets into that they're all going together on this wild adventure and finding new things. And, of course, they have to be scary because they like to go on scary adventures when they're kids. But this actually brought me back to my childhood. <laughs> just to think about going on, you know, just little excursions and, you know, hanging out with your friends and going on bike rides and, you know, just going on those little adventures to the unknown. Uh, well, this was ki initially kind of tough because I really just don't remember my childhood very much. Um, and I said to Joe that, um, I have to um, try to get in touch with my inner child, but my inner child has been grounded for a while, so um, I was able to come up with uh, big <laughs> in the sense that childlike uh, naivete, and um, even though he's in a man's body, you know, he, he still has that inner child sensibility of um, awe and excitement and, you know, general, you know, girls aren't girls. They, you know, they judge them from either if they have cooties or they're cool to hang out with. <laughs> um, but going a little older when I'm, you know, I'm getting to my teenage years, um, this kind of brought me back a bit. Detroit Rock City. Uh, never mind how they dressed in the movie. When I grew up, I was a huge Kiss fan. My first concert was Kiss back in the original makeup days. And, um, you know, going out and getting hammered when you were little, when you are younger, it just brought me back to that stage. And going even just a little further into that Graduating high school period would be dazed and confused. <laughs> Appropriate. <laughs> it really was like that a lot. I, think a lot of I mean, I, I, well, that's kind of a more of a '70s movie. I didn't graduate high school in the '70s. Mm -hmm. I'm not that old. But still, you know, knowing where the party is at the moon tap, <laughs> um, you know, just smoking as much weed as you can, drinking up as much beer as you can. Um, you know, that was pretty much it. 
back then. So those are the ones that made me recollect my youth. Not sure if that's what Joe wanted, but that's what he got. <laughs> Day six, finally. And this is, ooh, gag me with a spoon. Something that was really gross. Not necessarily bloody, but just gross. And, um, how'd you make out, honey? Why? I did this in my, um, Alphabet of the Dam for F. Oh my god, this movie totally freaked me out. I don't like bugs to begin with. <laughs> but the way she has transformation into this hideous looking bug <laughs> or fly was totally terrifying. The melted, the tearing off of the skin and, and his ear falling off and his hands turning into, oh, like fly legs and fly hands. <laughs> it was just so hideous. <laughs> it was scary. I didn't want to go to bed alone that night. <laughs> Um, so two movies that I had chosen for this, um, there, I know it does not a lot of blood. This one does have a lot of blood. It also has a lot of organs. It has a lot of juicy bits that I just don't know. I mean, maybe they didn't make enough blood, so they, like, Evil Dead, and they just used other things. Um, there's a lot of flesh falling off. There's... Um, organs that turn that take on a life of their own. Uh, it's very similar to Cronenberg. It's very visceral, very organic. Um, but it's a small underground gore company um, that um, puts out some awesome movies. Um, they can stretch a dollar into twenty and and, and make it look really good. Um, We've gotten to know the guys over the years. They're a great bunch of guys. Um, they're called Morbid Vision Films. And um, here are a couple. I mean, Fetus, just the name alone probably tells you that you're in for something that is just stomach churning. And they don't let you down. And, uh, this was their most recent offering, which is uh, Blood Pigs. Really pushed the envelope. Um, the basic theme of it is a kind of a zombie apocalypse, and uh, land is spoiled, and they, uh, food is there isn't a lot of food, so they've they've resorted to um, hunting and eating. Humans have actually resorted to hunting and eating for living dead because you can purify um, tainted meat, so they figured that's what they'll do, but it has a very bad uh, reaction to what happens, so um, it's really gooey and um, visceral. Uh, fantastic production. Again, Morbid Vision Films, you can uh, go online and get them. Um, one of their other offerings, Bone Sickness, has been uh, there's a version out by Unearthed Films as well, but um, again, this is Brian Paulin, Rich Caron, Rich George, Joe Olson, uh, all those guys do a fantastic job with it. Um, you got to check them out. They're a great bunch of guys, and they can really put together a good gore movie. Um, it's a juicy one. You see them at Rock and Shock every day. Yeah. So, anyways, those are our picks for day four, five, six. Um, hopefully, day seven is maybe more boobies. I mean, more nudity doesn't have to be boobies. All you have on your mind is boobies every single day. <laughs> All right, that's it. Hi.